right? We've got the proximal tubule, the distal tubule, and the collecting tubule. For the purposes of the actual RTAs, so like RTA type 1, RTA type 2, and RTA type 4, there's obviously only three of them, and, and none of them correspond to the loop of Henle. So delete the loop of Henle from your brain when it comes to learning the RTAs. So let's draw in first where the renal tubular acidoses occur in the nephron. So type 2 RTA is in the proximal tubule. Type 1 RTA is in the distal tubule and type 4 RTA is in the collecting tubule. So type 2 proximal, type 1 distal, type 4 collecting. So the way that I want to approach this is to fill in this table, because this is really all that you need to know about renal tubular acidosis, right? There's a lot of information out there on the internet. Don't be overwhelmed by it. If you can tell me for each of type 1, type 2, and type 4, what the potassium is doing, what the calcium is doing, what the pH is, and whether or not there's gonna be a kidney stone, then you're gonna get like 90% of your questions, right? So let's keep this simple so that we can preserve that brain space for more complex topics. So how are you gonna remember the order of 214, right? Because if you know 214, then you can remember proximal distal collecting and you'll be able to place the RTAs. So I want you to say it over and over and over again, like you're kind of singing, 214, 214, 214, 214. That's the order. Proximal distal collecting. 214. So we're going to fill in our chart as if we're singing a song kind of. So like 214, 214, 214. And the way that we're doing this is I'm actually going to sort of give you a poem to get the first part of this table right. So the first part is the potassium. So 214, low, low, more. 214, low, low, more. So 214 in order, low, low, more. So Type 2 renal tubular acidosis has low potassium, so it's hypokalemia. That's your finding. Type 1 renal tubular acidosis has hypokalemia. That's your finding. But type 4 renal tubular acidosis has hyperkalemia, so more in the mnemonic. 214, low, low, more. 214, low, low, more. So type 2 and type 1 both have low potassium, but since type 4 renal tubular acidosis has more in the mnemonic, that means it's hyperkalemia. So I'm putting it in red because this is the abnormal one, right? It's the different one. So if they're asking you a question on test day about a renal tubular acidosis in terms of what is the potassium doing, chances are they're asking you about type 4 because it's the only one that has hyperkalemia, right? Type 2 and type 1 both have hypokalemia. And this makes sense if you think about the physiology of what's actually happening at the collecting tubule. But if you don't want to even think about physiology, if you just want to keep this stupid and get your free points, say it, repeat after me. 214, low, low, more. 214, low, low, more. So that's the potassium. Now for the calcium, the pH, and whether or not you're going to see kidney stones, we're going to do this based on the number of the renal tubular acidosis. So if you look at our renal tubular acidosis, we've got type 2, type one and type four. And we're gonna pay special attention to the number itself. So the number two, the number one, and the number four. So what do you notice here? Well, two and four are even numbers, okay? Which is to say that one is odd. So one is the odd man out for the rest of this chart. So for the rest of this chart, two and four will have the same exact findings because they're both even numbers. But the odd number is the odd man out, and that's gonna be the abnormal finding for calcium, the abnormal finding for pH, and the abnormal finding for nephrolithiasis. So let's look at calcium. What's the calcium level in type two and type four? Well, in type two and type four, they're both even numbers, so it's normal. But the odd man out, right? Type one is an odd number, one is an odd number. It's gonna be the odd man out, so the calcium level is gonna be high. So I put it in red. Let's look at the pH. Well, in 2 and 4, we've got even numbers, so they're both going to be less than 5.5. But since 1 is an odd number and it's the odd man out, the pH is going to be different. So it's going to be greater than 5.5. So I put that in red. And then is there going to be kidney stones, right? Will you see nephrolithiasis? Well, 2 and 4 are even numbers, so no, they're going to be the same. But 1 is the odd number, so it's the odd man out. So it's going to be different, right? It's going to show you kidney stones. And that's sort of easy to remember if you remember the calcium because elevated calcium can precipitate nephrolithiasis. So look at this chart. I mean, this is awesome. 214, low, low, more. So you say 214 to remember not only the order of proximal distal collecting, but to remember the order of potassium, low, low, more. And then for the rest of the chart, the abnormal findings are going to be in type 1 renal tubular acidosis because 1 is the only odd number, so it's the odd man out. So it's calcium is high, it's pH is high above 5.5, 
and yes, you will see nephrolithiasis. So that's pretty awesome, guys. I mean, this is literally the high yield findings that you need to know for renal tubular acidosis. Everything else in review books and question banks is much lower yield. If you know this table, you're gonna get 90% of these RTA questions right. And I tell you, this is a pain in the butt to memorize. So if you know this table and you can follow my sweet mnemonic here, you are gonna get free points, boys and girls, free points. One more thing just for completeness sake that I want to fill in is some disease associations with each of these uh, different types of RTAs. So type 1, classically associated with Sjogren syndrome and rheumatoid arthritis. Type 4, classically associated with lupus and sickle cell. So one of the ways that I remember this is instead of saying Sjogren, I say Sjogren, like Sjogren. I replace the N with 1 since it kind of sounds alike, which reminds me that it's associated with type 1. And then I just kind of memorized that the S diseases go with type 4, and then rheumatoid arthritis goes with type 1. You know, not easy to memorize, but something that you can kind of store in the back of your brain. You might get a point or two off that. But that's it. I mean, literally, when I say that all you need to know is this table, I mean it. All you need to know is this table. If you see anything else showing up in question banks, they're being really nitpicky, and I'm really sorry that you paid money for that. But this is like 90% of what's important for RTAs.